Uh, my name is Dr. Carol Turley. I'm a, a marine scientist and I work for Plymouth Marine Laboratory in the UK. Ocean acidification is um, a process that occurs when the ocean takes up carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and at the moment it's taken up around 20% of the carbon dioxide that we have emitted to the atmosphere through burning fossil fuels. And when the CO2, which is an acid gas, reacts with seawater, it forms an acid. And this is a process called ocean acidification. It goes on and changes a whole lot of other parts of the chemistry in the ocean resulting in a change in the acidity of the ocean, that is the pH. And so that decreases and that pro whole process is called ocean acidification. It's happening globally from the poles through the tropics, uh, so from tip to toe and right out all around the world. Every organism takes in energy and it has to decide how, how it spends that energy, just like you and me. And so it's kind of a, quite a tight process. And if you stress it from ocean acidification, then we'd have to spend more energy battling that. And so we'd have less energy for reproduction uh, or forming eggs or swimming or growing shells. So it's the whole energy balance that can be impacted, as well as other things like ability to grow shells, sensory uh, behavioural changes as well. And it's the youngsters that are really, uh, really sensitive to ocean acidification. Well, the easy answer which isn't quite so easy, is reduce our emissions of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere by reducing fossil fuel uh, consumption. So we need to increase renewable energy and, and really reduce our use of carbon um, through as many means as possible. We can also help on a local scale because locally, there, in some areas, there are local um, sources of acidification. For example, from nutrients flowing down a river into an estuary can result in a big algal bloom at the estuary mouth, which then results in all that carbon being recycled and um, a change in the pH. So there are various local sources, so we can clean up our source locally and that will prevent that additional amount of acidification. The big one is actually for, to implement the Paris Agreement, that all countries sign up to that, and this way we can save our, our, many of our habitats. Our, our coral reefs will be less stressed through acidification, and it will also reduce warming as well, which is the other big problem for, for marine organisms and biodiversity is that amazing warming that is going on as well. So the oceans are absorbing over 90% of the heat that we're producing from global warming. It's also absorbing 27% of the carbon dioxide. So it's buffering climate on land and in the air. Um, but of course, um, it's, it's, it's the ocean that's suffering from all of that and all the life in the ocean, including biodiversity. The fact that it's recognising the issue is fantastic. Um, so actually having a, a, an ocean acidification target in, in its own right means it's actually addressing it. That means the politicians are aware of it. But SDG itself can actually um, write a recommendation to the United Nations climate change uh, negotiations to really, really encourage that acidification is part of that discussion and that oceans and ocean biodiversity and all the wonderful things we get from the ocean are part of that negotiation.